Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidoff. There I am with Ringo. Pictured inside a book. The reason I pictured inside a book is because I am a children's author and illustrator. So I've written lots of children's books and I drew I draw all the pictures to go with them too. So this is my latest one. It's called Dog Gone. It's all about this chap, Teddy, who loses his human. I like writing books about dogs, so some of you might have seen this one too, it's called Odd Dog Out, about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. But that's enough about my books, because we are here on this very special Boxing Day edition of Draw with Rob to draw a picture together. Now, I hope you all had a lovely Christmas day yesterday. I hope you're not all feeling sick because you've eaten too many chocolates and too much food. <laughs> I know I, I am. But you know, hey, what are you going to do? It's Christmas. That's what you've got to do at Christmas, isn't it? You've got to eat lots of food. Now, maybe some of you got some lovely pens and art equipment for Christmas. So this is perfect for you guys, isn't it? Because we can actually use some of your pens and your sketchbooks and your coloured pencils, things like that, and do a drawing together. So I thought, right, what can we draw on Boxing Day? What about a wizard. I don't know about you guys, but Harry Potter is very popular in my household. So usually there is some Harry Potter themed presents um, that my daughters get, or even I get sometimes. Um, quite often we have some Harry Potter Lego, um, but one thing's for sure, there's, there's always some kind of Harry Potter book involved, whether it's one of the actual stories, although we have read them all a few times, um, or like a special gift book, or we watch one of the films. We love Harry Potter. So I thought I would show you how to draw a very simple drawing of a wizard. So sort of a bit like Dumbledore, but not Dumbledore, because I'm not allowed to show you how to draw Dumbledore for legal reasons. <laughs> but it's a wizard anyway. So just in case you've never watched one of these videos before, this is how it works. Now, lots of children tell me that they don't think they're very good at drawing. But my theory is that everybody can draw. It's just sometimes we need a bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in, which is where I come in. So this is how it works. I start doing my drawing here on my piece of paper. I just draw a tiny bit of the drawing, a little tiny shape. Then you can pause the video and you can draw exactly what I draw. Start me up again, I'll draw a bit more. Then you draw, then I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, and then we're gonna end up with a lovely picture of a wizard. Right, shall we start? Grab yourself a piece of paper, grab yourself a pen or a pencil or something to draw with. I'm just gonna see if this pen works. Uh, is that the one that works? I've got, see look, I've got two of these pens and one of them is running out of ink and one of them isn't. I think this is the good one. I've got another piece of paper next to me. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I've got a piece of paper just over there that I'm sort of practicing. Just test, I'm testing the pens out to see if they work. And this is the one that works, so I'm gonna use this one, I think. Right, so yes, grab yourself a pen, a piece of paper. We might need something to color with a bit later on, but apart from that, we're ready to go. Okay, wizard. Right, let's start, shall we? We are gonna start, as we do with so many of our drawings, with a horizontal line. Slightly towards the top of the page, but not right at the top, not too far down either. So about three quarters of the way up. And I would say that line is about six centimetres long. And then from the right hand end of that line, I want you to go up in a diagonal line to about there. So again, not right to the top of the page. Okay, we need a bit of space above us still here. Then from this end, we're going to do another diagonal line going up, but we're not going to make them meet. We're going to keep them about two centimetres apart like that. And we'll leave a gap at the top. Now, what I want you to do here is we're gonna go slightly zigzaggy, just slightly zigzaggy, like a little sort of S shape. And then from that point, we're gonna go up at a different angle like that, just a centimeter or so. Then we're gonna change angle, we're gonna head back down a bit, just again for a little tiny, just a little tiny length. Then we're gonna change angle again and we're gonna head up to about there. So we sort of zigzagged a bit. Then I want you to turn around, head back up here, 
to about there, like that. And then we're going to head back down and we're going to join up with that line there. And this is going to be our wizard's hat. I'm sure you guessed that already. Very important part of a wizard's attire. Probably the most important part of a wizard's attire, isn't it? His hat. Right then. Now, the next thing to do is I want you to put your pen just at the bottom right hand side of your hat. And I want you to start coming down your page. And can you see I'm doing tiny little zigzaggy things again. And we're gonna go right down, not quite to the bottom, but almost to the bottom, like that. And can you see I'm very slightly curved, so it's not dead straight in my zigzag line, very slightly curved. Let's do exactly the same on this side. We're gonna come down our page, little tiny zigzags, like that, heading to the bottom of the page. And we're gonna stop when we get level with the other line, like that. And then at the bottom, I want you to join them up, but not again, not in a straight line. We're just gonna join them up in lots of little tiny, little zigzags, like that. There we go. <laughs> I wonder if you guess what this part of the wizard is. <laughs> okay, the next thing to do is about half a centimeter away from this line here, I want you just to come down I want you to start heading across like that and then when we get to here we're going to curve up and we're going to join up again like that. So sort of like a little rectangle. Okay then we're going to leave, we're going to leave that area just for a minute I think and we're going to come down to here so we're going to go down to near the bottom of this area. Shall I tell you what this is? This is our wizard's beard. They always have lovely, long, lustrous beards, don't they? Or at least Dumbledore does. <laughs> okay, and so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go down towards the bottom of this beard and we're gonna come down in a straightish line, slightly diagonal, right towards the bottom of our page, where we're gonna stop about a centimeter from the bottom of the page. We're gonna go straight along the bottom, like that. Just, we take it just past the end of the beard and then we'll just join it back up again. So it's very slightly tapering out like that. And that's gonna be our wizard's cloak. Starting to really take shape now, isn't, isn't it, our little wizard here? I'm just gonna change pens to my thinner Kurataki pen here. And what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna add a little nose. I've done my noses like this before in a few of my drawings, so some of you will be familiar with this, but just in case you're not, this is how we do a nose. We're gonna draw a little tiny semicircle, first of all. So like that part of a letter D without the vertical line, if you see what I mean. And then just coming from the top of that, we're just gonna draw a little thin line just going up. And that's basically our wizard's nose. Now I think I'm gonna give our wizard a little pair of round spectacles. So we're just gonna draw a circle in there and a circle in there. And in the middle of each of those circles, we're gonna draw a little dot that we color in. And look, our wizard is awake. But because we're gonna give him spectacles, we're just gonna join those up, a little curved line across like that. I think we're, they're gonna be those spectacles, those the type that just balance on your nose. So we're not gonna give him arms, give the spectacles arms. We're gonna give him arms in a minute, but not the spectacles. But let's give him some eyebrows. So just coming down from the hat, we're just gonna add sort of a little furry shape like that. Let's give our wizard a pair of eyebrows to make it look like he's concentrating. Now, because he's got this huge long beard, we can't really see his mouth, but what you can do with a beard is you can just suggest where the mouth is by, if you just sort of add some little wispy bits, just coming across like that. So lots of little lines like that in a rough shape of a little mouth. It sort of just looks like 
that's the end of his moustache above his mouth. Do you see what I mean? So it looks a bit mouth-like without actually drawing the mouth at all. A little trick for you there. Trick being the operative word for this drawing. So you're drawing a wizard. <laughs> And you know what? We're not a million miles away from finishing now. We just need to add his arms. So we'll start with his right arm. So on the left-hand side as we look, we're just going to draw about halfway down his beard. We're just going to draw a kind of rectangle shape. Not a rectangle, more like a triangle, I guess, really. So one line coming out and one line going up like that because they've got quite kind of baggy um, sleeves to their robes. So that arm is by his side, but this one here, we're going to do it going upwards. So let's do it going up there, then we're going to come down in a straight line, and then we're going to join back up the side there. Okay, so there's his arms. Let's give him some hands. Now, hands, we're just going to draw the tips of his fingers sticking out. We're going to start with a little curve like that, which can be his thumb. Then we're just going to come down and we're just going to add one, two, three, four little fingers for a little hand sticking out the end of his sleeve. Now this is the trickiest part of the drawing because we're going to do our wizard holding his wand. Of course we are, he's a wizard, of course he has a wand. Now this is how you draw a hand holding something. So it's going to be holding the wand, if you imagine my pen is this wand, it's going to be holding it like that so we need to draw these four bits of fingers and a thumb holding onto something. This is how you do it, okay? We're going to start with the thumb. So we're going to come up and we're going to draw our little thumb shape like that, okay? First of all, so you go out, round and stop, okay? Then we are going to draw these fingers here. So this is how we do it. We just draw basically four little sausages. One, two, Three, four, four little sausages. And then just coming out of the middle of that bottom sausage, we're just gonna draw a little line that joins back up with his sleeve. And you can see it looks like he's holding onto something. So now we need to draw what it is he's holding onto, which is his wand. So let's draw his wand. It's gonna be a slightly sort of crookedy wand, I think this one. I like it when they're a bit, they look a bit sort of handmade, whittled out of wood. There we go. We'll give it a little end piece like that. And there we go. There is my wizard's wand. And the last thing we need to do, because this is a magic wand, we need to add a bit of magic around the tip of the wand. I think I've shown you how to do this before as well, but I'll show you again. What you do, start off with a little star shape. Let's add another little star shape up here, and maybe one more down here. Okay. Now, in between all those, just add a few little crosses. Spread them out nice and evenly. But we're going to try and keep everything in a sort of this sort of circle area here. And once you've done the crosses, draw a few tiny circles, like that, keeping everything nice and spread out. Now I want you to add some little sort of dots in between all those gaps. And can you see it's starting to look like a sort of magic-y, twinkly, stardusty mass. Then you can add a few sort of little asterisks just to add another layer of texture to our magic spell. And there we go. A little magic puff coming from the end of his wand. Okay, I think it's time that we coloured our wizard in now. This is the fun bit because often in my experience, wizards have lots of nice patterns on their hats and on their cloaks, don't they? Sometimes it's stars and moons, things like that, but do you know what? I think it can be anything you like. I mean, it depends what your wizard's speciality 
Keith's magic spell is, I guess. Maybe if he's really good at turning people into frogs, he could have lots of frogs all over his cloak. So maybe what you could do is you could go back over our old Draw With Rob videos and you could say, choose, I don't know, let's have a think, sheep. Maybe our wizard is really good at turning people into sheep. So you could go back to our sheep tutorial and draw lots of sheep all over his cloak. Or maybe you could do alligators or what about turtles or unicorns, something like that. Or maybe one of my characters, maybe a Kevin. You could be covered in Kevins or sausage dogs, something like that. It's totally up to you. And of course, any colors you like. I'm gonna have a go at coloring mine in now. I'm gonna go into super speed mode. Of course I am. So I'm gonna see you back here in about 30 seconds with a fully colored in wizard. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. There we go, there's my finished coloured in wizard with his magic wand. So I've gone for the classic stars and moons and things on his hat, nice long grey beard. It looks a bit like the author Philip Arda. Do you know who Philip Arda is? I've done, I've done some books with him. He is the guy who's written the Furry Purry Bean Cat series. Here you go, there's one of the covers that I've drawn for him. And um, I didn't mean to do this, but my wizard looks exactly like Philip Arda. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what that says about my feelings about Philip, but there we go. He is a very magical writer, I suppose. So there's my wizard, and I've added a few little bits of color around his magic wand, of course, the shadow on the bottom to make it look like he's standing on the floor. Oh, I need to sign it, don't we? Don't forget to sign your drawings, everybody. Here we go, Rob, down the bottom. So listen, I cannot wait to see your wizard drawings. What you need to do is you need to get your grown up to take a picture of your drawings. And then if you post, if they post it on social media using the draw with Rob hashtag, that way I will get to see it. And I really can't wait to see what you come up with, all the different colored beards and cloaks and all that sort of thing. It'd be great, very exciting. Now listen, as I said earlier, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. This is our last Draw With Rob of 2020. What a year it's been. We started way back in March when the pandemic first hit, didn't we? We first went into lockdown. We started in March. So we have been doing this for, what's that, nine months? Over nine months? So I just want to you take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who have joined in and drawn along with me for this past year or so, just less than a year. It's been such a lovely thing for me, especially. We've got a real little Draw With Rob community going on. I love seeing all your drawings. Every single day I get sent hundreds and hundreds of drawings and it really does fill my heart with joy when I see all of your drawings. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who joins in um, with these videos. I know there's quite a few of you out there that have done every single one which is this is number 67 and i think we've done at least three or four special editions as well so we've done 70 around about 70 videos and some of you have done every single one of them so i'm so pleased that you enjoy drawing with me because i certainly enjoy showing you how to draw all of these characters so thank you very much i'm not going to say happy new year yet because it's not new year but i am going to be back next very early very very early in the new year with a brand new draw with rob video so listen have a great relaxing festive time with your family and i will see you in 2021 bye everybody
You didn't expect to see me that soon, did you? <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed that video that you've just watched. I can't wait to see the drawings that you've done. Don't forget to share them using the Draw With Rob hashtag. I just wanted to pop up here and remind you that the Draw With Rob activity book is out now if you would like to grab yourself a copy. You can get it from wherever you get books from and it's full of really cool things for you to do, colouring pages, lots of the draw-alongs of your favourite characters that we've done on these videos here. And there's a little frame for you to draw your pictures in, perforated edge so you can tear the picture out easily and stick it up on the wall. But there's loads of really cool things for you to do. As I said, colouring pages, um, little thing. I started drawings off and you've got to finish them, that kind of thing. And then right at the end, if you go through the book and you really enjoy yourself, look, there's even your very own certificate to stick up on your wall to say that you are officially an ace artist. So there you go. That book is available now. I'll stick a link somewhere in the post or on the YouTube page for you if you are interested in buying it. In the meantime, this time I really am going. I'll see you very soon for another Draw With Rob video. Take care.